a little bit of a miss, but um, it should be good to go. I think audio and everything will be fine. I do like to let the stream start up on my end just to make sure everything's good so I don't get 15 minutes into the lesson and realize you guys are like, oh, no, I can't see or hear because that has happened before. Not in a long time because I, I know now to check, but <laughs> definitely happens. Uh, so welcome, everybody. So happy to have you with us. Let me just say hello while some people are rolling in here. Phil D. Will got his 200 impossible hours of practicing this weekend. And uh, we got Ten Sish, who is employee of the year. They say, hi, Tim. I'm literally at work in a meeting and still managed to log in from my phone. Glad to hear it. We got, uh, I already said Filthy Will, uh, Jeremy's back once again, of course. Welcome, Jeremy. And we got Zainep. Hello, Tim, and all the piano students. I wish a happy week to everybody. Wish you too. So, uh, Zainep, send me another um, link to the, what was it, a Beethoven piece you did? And I'll do that at the uh, end of the month for the student showcase. I did see your message before, but can't quite uh, find the link. Steven. Uh, hello, Stephen. Welcome. I believe it's your first time. Good afternoon to Graham. Welcome, Graham. So happy you could uh, meet with us today. All right, I'm going to get started here. It looks like everything is good to go, right? Okay, everything's looking pretty good. Okay. All right, good. Let me bring up my document. Uh, and okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with the Facebook stream. Should take 15, 20 seconds or so, and then we're going to get right on into the key signature stuff for today. All right, here we go. So give me 20 seconds. Hello, students. Welcome to our classroom piano lessons on the web. Your piano teacher, Tim, here. And today I'm going to be teaching you about how to master key signatures. We're going to get into that just in a second. But first, I want to say that if you're watching on YouTube, make sure you like our page. If you're watching on, no, if you're watching on Facebook, like our page. If you're watching on YouTube, make sure that you're subscribed. You have all notifications turned on by hitting the bell because we have new lessons coming out all the time. And you don't want to miss a beat. All right, so here we go. Let me get into the lesson here. Let me take a quick look at my notes. And then we'll get on with the lesson. Today, I'm going to be teaching you some secrets on mastering your key signatures. So by the end of this lesson, you're going to be able to figure out how many sharps or flats a certain key has. Like, say, I have the key of E. I'll know that that has four sharps. So that's what you'll be able to do. But also you'll be able to reverse engineer that where I'll be able, I'll be giving you like a certain number of sharps or flats and then you're gonna be able to figure out what key you are in from there. Let's get to it. Okay. All right, uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. here we go. Yeah, I'll have my editor edit in the order sharps and order flats, so. Here we go. Okay, there is two things you absolutely must do before we begin. That is memorize your order of sharps and memorize your order of flats. And I'm gonna tell you why here in a second, but your order of sharps is F, C, G, D, A, E, B. There's seven of them. F, C, G, D, A, E, B. Say that over and over. You can come up with a saying if the kind of like when you do when you um, learn how to read music if you want. Um, I know that a young student of mine said uh, the saying for her was fat children gather daily at every breakfast. F, C, G, D, A, E, and B. Order of flats you got to memorize. It's actually sharps in reverse. So it's B, E, A, D, G, C, F. B, E, A, D, G, C, F. And the way I uh, tell my students to memorize this one is it spells bead, so that's pretty good. And then greatest common factor, GCF. So bead, greatest common factor. So what are the sharps again? F, C, G, D, A, E, B. 
order flats, B E A D G C F. These are literally the order in which you add the sharps or the flats to the key signature, and you'll understand more in a second. Okay. Oh, here we go. Let me bring up staff pad here for a second, and I'm going to get a comment on what this software is, but it's staff pad. Although this part's probably going to get edited out, so <laughs> I'll, I'll have to answer that in the comments. Uh, all right, here we go. Let me just bring up a new sheet for us. And we'll go right on from there. All right, here we go. We're almost there, I promise. Uh, let me bring it up. All right. Is it? I already have one named key signatures. Key two. <laughs> there you go. Brilliant title. Okay. Lots of creativity went into that. Uh, let me write some things here. Okay, so in the beginning of pretty much every piece you will play, you're going to find what is called a key signature, which is this guy and this guy. And what they tell you is the number of sharps and what the sharps are, or flats rather, they can be sharps or flats. Um, basically what sharps or flats are going to appear consistently throughout that piece. So the three sharps we have here are F, C, and G, that means all F's, all C's, all G's, and the whole piece, unless it tells you otherwise with a natural, are going to be sharp. Same thing with the left hand. Uh, so, does that look familiar? F, C, G, G, that should look like something we talked about a second ago. The order of sharps, right? F, C, G. So, when you have three sharps, F, C, and G, those are the three sharps you have. Pretty easy, right? Now, if I had five sharps, I'd have F, C, G, D, and A. Let's see if that checks out. All right. No, that was not the right one. Darn touch screen. That was the one over it. Oh my god. That was my error that time. I can't blame anybody else. Okay, here we go. Okay, I said our five sharps are F, C, G, D, and A. So if you had a note right where that first sharp is, um, you'd obviously have F. Like I said, the first three are F, C, G. And then, hey, if I had a note here on this line, that would be D. And down there would be A. And again, the, the bass clef, it's the exact same notes. It's just they, they appear in a different place because the notes are shifted with the bass clef. That's just how it is. Okay, so F, C, G, D, A it marks out perfectly. Do, um, I don't know why it's doing that, but hey, what are you going to do? Okay, flats works the exact same way. You got four flats here, except this time you're going to be using your order of flats. Remember, the first four in your order of flats spell bead. So I'm willing to bet that this first flat is B, E, next one's E, A, and D. Hey, that spells bead, and it matches up perfectly. You just got to take my word for it as you... You uh, have more and more sharps, or more and more flats, and more and more sharps. It, you know, matches out to be the same thing up to seven. Okay, then let me check my notes real quick because I wanted to go somewhere specific with this. Okay, here we go. Now, one thing that confuses people is there's a big difference between the amount of sharps or flats a piece can have, a key signature can have, and the actual name of the key. They don't always line up. In fact, they often do not. Uh, let's take a look here. So we have our four flats, B, E, A, and D. I said right a second ago that that spells bead, um, our first four in our order of flats. Now, the second part of the question is, well, what, f what key is this in? Like, if you're in a band, you'd have to know, like, all right, guys, we're going to play this in the key of D or the key of F sharp or something like that. So you need to know what the heck that's about. So for the flats, it's really easy. 
and all you got to do is you find the flat all the way to the right and you're going to ignore it <laughs> so you're going to go to the one right next to that one in i guess you could say one in from the right is probably a better way to put it and you're going to find um so if you had a note here and it's the third letter in bead right so that's a so what you're going to do is you're going to find a on the piano um, any A will do. Here's A, and then you flat it, just like that. So the key with four flats, B, E, A, and D, is actually the key of A flat. Let's do a couple more examples. All right, what about this one? We got six flats now, and you, all you got to do is say the first six in your order of flats, B, E, A, D, G, and C. And what you do is you ignore the, the last flat. You go one in from the right, and that's actually your answer. So what note would that be? Well, if it's on the second line of the treble clef, it's G. So you go to your piano, you find G, and you flat it, G flat. And that works out for all of them except for one and if you think about it it makes sense right because i i said up until now with the flats to figure out what key you're in you go one in from the right well what if there's only one flat then you can't go one in from the right and then you're kind of up a creek i guess they could say try to be family friendly as i can on this channel but um it's the key of f you're just gonna have to memorize that one because there's no flat you know i'll show you what the key of f looks like right now it's only one flat on the whole thing and um yeah you're just gonna have to memorize it because of obvious reasons so let's just real quick i just want to show you what that looks like so it looks like that and then one thing i haven't showed you at all before we move on to the sharps portion is if you have nothing written at all you're probably talking about the key of c major uh, it's a possibility that some of these are minor keys as well. We're not going to go too much into that. Um, I will mention it here at the end, though. Okay. Okay, now what do you do with sharps? It works a little bit different. This is you have the, uh, the key signature in front of you already. You have the two sharps which are what? F and C, right? So the second one is C. So what you do this time, you are going to the one all the way at the end. And what you're going to do is you're going to find that note on the piano and sharp it. So it would be C sharp, right? So our two notes are F sharp, C sharp. You find that sharp. And you go up a half step. You got to make sure that you count this right. It's just the next note connecting it. Um, so the key, the name of the key that we're in is the key of D. And the two sharps we have are F sharp and C sharp. Let's do a couple more sharp examples. Okay, now we have a lot of sharps. We have six sharps, and nobody likes to play with six sharps. So what sharps do we have? Well, we have these six sharps, F, C, G, D, A, and E. Now, where did I get those six from? From your order of sharps. you got to do that first. Memorize those. It will help with everything else for obvious reasons. Now, I'm going to leave this up to you, sort of. Um, what do we do next? Think about it. Do we go to the one one in from the right well no because that's what we did for the flats you got to keep in mind it's a little bit different but this time we are actually looking at the one all the way to the right and if i had a note there in that top space that would be e right and we're talking about e sharp since we're talking about sharps so to keep in mind that e sharp is here this is where you're starting from and this is why i said you have to be careful of moving up only a half step or you're not going to get the right answer. So what you do is you move from E sharp, which looks a whole lot like F, doesn't it? You bring it up a half step and therefore the key that we are in is F sharp. Now you might be thinking to yourself, if you are big brained, you may be, or just, you know, curious, you might be thinking, okay, well, Tim, why isn't that the key of G flat? 
because it could be, right? They're the same note. F sharp is the same as G flat. Well, here's the thing is that if you are talking about a key with sharps in it, your resulting key signature is going to be sharp. If you're talking about keys with flats in them, your resulting key signature is going to be what? Sharp. No, flat. It's going to be flat. So it always matches whatever you're talking about. Sharps with sharps, flats with flats. All righty, let me check my notes. Make sure that I'm on track, didn't forget anything too important. Okay, all right, perfect. Okay, all right, here we go, here we go. Okay. All right, well, what if you're in a band and somebody says, play in the key of F, play in the key of G, play in the key of D, and you don't have the sharps or flats in front of you? What in the world do you do? Well, your, your old friends, the order sharps and order flats are here to help you out, if that wasn't corny enough. So uh, here we go. So here's, the, here's how it works for sharps. So say that we have a sharp key. By the way, all sharp keys, except for the last two, don't have sharp after them. So... Uh, you know, G, D, A, E, and B all don't have sharp after them. However, all the flat ones do have flats after them. So like B flat, A flat, things like that. Just want to throw that out there. So say we have the key of E, right? So all you got to do is play E on the piano, and there's a little bit more to it. You go down one whole step, and you are going to then figure out what note that is, which is D, right? We start from E. Now we have D. Now here's the probably the second part, how you're going to get this. What you need to do now is count to your order of sharps until you get to D sharp. So here we go. F, which is 1. Two, uh, C, which is 2. G, and then oh, D is 4. So we figured it out. The key of E has four sharps, F, C, G, and D. Let's do a few more. Let's say uh, your bandmate says play in the key of D. All right, well, how many sharps or flats do we have? Well, since it's D and doesn't have flat after, you're probably, you can surmise that we're probably talking about sharps. So you find D, then what do you do? You go down a whole step to C. So now what we got to do is we got to count our order sharps until we get to C. F, which is one, C, two. So we already got to our answer. The key of D has two sharps, F sharp and C sharp. By the way, learning your scales, little tidbit in here is a great way to really um, memorize and internalize each of these key signatures. All right, one more sharp key to go. What if uh, somebody says, let's play in the key of F sharp, and you're like, darn you, nobody likes F sharp. And you can probably guess that it has a lot of sharps. Well, let's figure it out, right? So here you go. You're going to start on F sharp. That's the key of the na name of the key that we're in. Then what you're going to do is you're going to go down two half steps or a whole step. So E. So now what's the next step? You count your order of sharps until you get to E. Here we go. F, C, G, D, A, E. So six sharps. And the six sharps it has are the F, C, G, D, A, and E, the first six in your order sharps. Let's talk about some flats. All right, hold on. Oh, yeah, yeah, let me check my notes real quick. Okay, yeah, this one's easy. You gotta be careful because flats works a little bit different. Let me show you. So let's say somebody says play in the key of B flat. So let's check that out. So um, here's B flat. So now we gotta figure out how many flats in the key of B flat. So here's what you do. Once you hit the note that you're starting with, you don't have to count down or up now. With flats, it's a little bit different. You just play that note. And then what you gotta do, then you go to counting your order of flats similar to the sharps, one less step. 
Um, and then what you do is you get to the flat that you're talking about. So in your order of flats, B, right? Well, I'm already hitting B. But here's the thing. With flats, you go one more, E. So the key of B flat actually has two flats, B flat and E flat. So you find the flat you're looking for, and then you actually go one more in your order of flats. Let's do, like, say, the key of A flat, right? So here's A flat. We don't need to do anything on the keyboard. And then what you do is you count your flats until you get to A flat, B, E, A. Oh, there you go. So there's three. But then you add one. You have to add one, D. So the key of A flat is four flats, B, E, A, and D. One more with the flats. Let's say we have um, C flat. So C flat looks a lot like B on the piano, but it's different. So here, we're talking about flats, so you don't need to move anywhere. Now what do you do? Well, you count your order of flats until you get to not B. you got to keep in mind that this is C flat. So here we go. B, E, A, D, G, C, right? So we found it. But we have to add one more, right? So you always add one. F. So the key of C flat actually has all seven flats. That's the maximum you can have. And it's B, E, A, D, G, C, and F. All right. Um, let me bring it into the chat again. Carla gets drunk and eats butterflies. I've never heard that one. Okay, good. It looks like um, Jeremy's helping people. This is one that this is one lesson you're going to have to watch a bunch of times um, to really get it, and even then, it'll take time. Uh, happy to be here first time. Says learning with Rich. As I started to learn that uh, how to play keys, I bought Korg EK50. Hopefully, this is okay for me. Probably. Um, so long as it has, you know, like as full size of a keyboard as you can get. Um, but welcome, Learning with Rich. So happy to have you with us. We have another Rich here. I don't know if other Rich is here, but I'll call you Rich too. No, I'll just call you by your name. I'm just kidding. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba, I'm ready to go to my piano lesson. Oh, it says Suzanne or Susan, Suzanne. Uh, so here, happy to hear that. We got uh, Fuddy Duddy back here from Cold. Bangor, Maine, once again. We got Bernadine here as well. Another uh, classic, classic student, um, Graham. Okay, everybody. Uh, why is it important to know what the key is? Well, I mentioned in the beginning of the lesson, it's important to know what the key is because you might not have the key signatures in front of you. You may be playing with a group um, or something like that, or you might be improvising a little bit more advanced perhaps than where you might be at this time. I'm not sure. Um, so that's where it comes in. Cause like you might be playing with a band, right? And your band leader, director, whatever they may be, uh, they might say, that also helps with reading music. Jeremy is correct. Um, they might say play in the key of A. Well, you're going to have to know what that is. You have to know that has three sharps, F, C, and G. Um, and go from there. It also helps with music theory. So as you get further and further along, um, you can much better chart out what sharps or flats you're going to commonly find in a piece, right? So the key of A had three sharps, F, C, and G. So when I'm playing that piece, anytime I run across an F, C, or G, they're going to be sharp. So it gives you a much better idea um, one, if somebody tells you what key to play in on how to do that, and then two, it gives you a much better idea on what sharps or flats you're probably going to expect throughout a piece. That's probably the more important one for most piano players. All right. Yeah, you'll get it, Bernadine. It takes time for sure. Uh, okay, let me talk a little bit about minors. Um, so let me kind of go over that real quick. I don't want to talk too much about it, though, because I don't want to confuse everybody. Okay, I want to tell you about something that um, is going to come into play a little bit more later on as you get better and better at these. I didn't want to bring this into play so much right now because I want to avoid confusion. So... <laughs> 
Uh, pay attention, like, mostly to the stuff I've talked up until now, but you do need to know about this because you might see some discrepancies in, you know, the pieces that you play and things like that. So for every key signature, we, so far we've been talking all about major keys. And major keys sound, you know, bright and happy. So if we had the key with one sharp G, has a bright and happy sound. However, for every key signature, there's a major and minor equivalent, and you need to know basically how to figure this out. <clears throat> so let's take, for example, the key with zero sharp, zero flat. So I mentioned way earlier that that is the key of C. I just played the C major chord with the C major scale up there, right? Zero sharp, zero flats. However, there is another. There is a, that's a meme. So if there there's another um, key signature, uh, with zero sharp zero flats and you do this. This is how you figure it out. You go to your major key C and then you go down one two a three Half steps and that gives you your answer. So the key of a minor Also has zero sharp zero flats Except the only difference is you're starting on a really and You're gonna have different chords with it that center more around a now if you're playing a piece How are you gonna tell whether it's major or minor? Well the main thing there's actually quite a few steps to this, but the main thing I want you to do is use your ears. So if I'm playing a piece, right? Does that sound happy? Well, yeah, certainly does. Much more than... Yeah, that sounds really sad. So if, you, if, you, if it sounds happy, you're talking about major keys, which means everything I talked about in this lesson is valid and good. And then um, if it sounds minor... I mean, everything I said is still valid and good, but just keep in mind that if it sounds, if the piece sounds minor, then you're going to have to go down those three half steps to figure that out. And that works for sharp key signatures and flat key signatures. If you don't understand what I'm saying at all to this point, don't worry about it. Work on the stuff I told you in the beginning of the lesson, because I like to be very objective with the lessons, like to like get the student to really understand one thing and then get you to understand another. But it wouldn't be fair if I didn't mention the minors. All right. On with the lesson, even though I think that's it. <laughs> um, okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do like a little bit of a um, outro. Now, it'll sound like I'm ending the live stream, but I am not, I promise, um, at least not yet. And uh, this is basically so when I piece the video together, it makes sense. Um, so let's do that. Um, okay. Understanding your key signatures and music theory is super important if you want to become a big, a better piano player. Uh, check out this playlist right here. It will really help catch you up with these key signatures, give you extra practice, things like that. It's been your piano teacher, Tim, here. Thank you so much for coming by today. And I'll see you, yes you, in the next lesson. All right, I'm still here. Filthy Will, though, has cashed out. Cash him outside. Uh, got to go to the meeting. Okay, got to run to a meeting. Oh, I hope you have fast feet. Have a good day, everybody, and see you Friday. See you, filthy Will. We got Bradizzle. Three half steps. Got it. Yeah, you go three half steps down. Take one thing at a time. It's going to be confusing, guys. Um, it, I didn't get it right away at first either. Avi says, by the way, I'm sorry I came here and talked casually instead of asking piano-related questions. That's okay. I didn't even see any of many of your other comments, Avi, because I was busy teaching. But perfectly fine, so long as you guys don't take over the chat too, too crazily. Uh, Sean Q is back once again. I love your name, Bradizzle. Baradizzle. Uh, Auk says, the key is very important because you know which notes to play probably summed it up way better than I did. Uh, perfect. A lady and a piano. Well, welcome a lady and her piano. Well, it says a piano, so it's not necessarily saying that it's your piano. It could be somebody else's piano, but welcome. Regardless. Uh, okay, just being stupid and silly today. Uh, ba -ba -ba -bum. When I signed up for piano lessons, I had no idea there were so many weird things to learn. Well, welcome! <laughs> and get used to it. It gets worse. <laughs> I had a student tell me that the other day. Like, the exact same comment was like, 
Oh, there's so many weird things with piano. And I'm like, it gets way worse. <laughs> but that shouldn't scare you. I'm just, I'm mostly kidding, but I am serious that it does get worse. But um, it gets more interesting. I'm going to phrase it, spin it like that. By the way, guys, make sure you like our video because it helps other students know this is a quality lesson they can learn from as well. Uh, yeah, watch it again and again and again for sure. I watch that. I recommend that with all my videos, not only because it helps me with, with YouTube, uh, but because um, it's good for you as well. A little hard to go back to the keywords of Sarah, but it's helped to give me incentive to keep going and get a better keyboard. A baby, if actually, excuse me, a real piano. Getting a little tired here. Did my gym workout for the day, so I'm running oil and steam a little bit. I've been trying not to drink as much coffee either because it like ramps up over time and then then I'm like barely uh, barely awake and drinking lots of coffee still, which is bad. Uh, okay, so Avi came over, not a problem. Really cool technique, says Bar Baradizzle. Um, I think a hint, think of a word flat, starts with letter F and it's only major scale as one flat. That's actually not a bad thing, Jeremy, I like that. I like that, if I remember it later, I will use it. All right, welcome everybody who's new. Um, I guess in the remaining time, uh, we might end a little bit early today, but we I try to get to as close to the hour as I can. Um, let some comments or questions come in. Uh, let's do this. Um, so over on my website, Piano Lessons on the Web, I have a lot of courses that can help you learn a lot more about piano music. I'm not really gonna go into it today, um, but you use code YouTube and check out to get 15% uh, off. Just want to throw it out there. But what I want to do right now is uh, go to the community tab and um, check out what we're going to be talking about and when. So next Friday, I'm actually glad we could meet today. I'm sorry about that. I was at my dad's and I did, wasn't able to. Actually, you know what? I did make it back in time but I didn't know I was going to. So I was like, well, instead of rushing, you know, I want to get to, to home safely more than anything. Uh, anyway, Friday, and, and that'll happen. So if I can't do one of the live streams, I'm just going to move it to Monday. I think that sounds fair. Uh, Friday, November 8th says um, adults, Alfred's Adult Level 1 book review. Um, so I'm going to be kind of showing you about that. A great book to pick up. And then uh, Sunday, the following Sunday is how to use, excuse me, music theory to play piano. Uh, that's tips for learning Bach, lead sheet symbols, transposition. You can read the rest. So you're reading apps. I'll go over. And the student showcase at the end of the month is what I wanted to go over with you real quick. The student showcase. So what it is is if you want to participate, great. If you don't, great. You uh, send me links to um, recordings that you've done throughout the month. I try to limit it one submission per student per month. So you can submit a submission this month, next month, the month after. Just don't do two in a month and then skip a month and then do five or something like that. Just one per month. And if you skip a month, now too bad. And um, so what you do is you send me a recording of your playing. It could be at any playing level. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to listen to it during the last live stream of the month and kind of review it, critique it a little bit, give you some helpful uh, tips and advice so you can kind of think about it a little bit like a one-on-one um, -on -one lesson with me where I'll be looking at something you're doing and I'll be giving you feedback on it. It'll just be in front of everybody, but that's okay. Um, it's probably better that you get practice doing that anyways. Whoever thought of this way of finding the key signatures must have really wanted people to think. Yeah, it takes time. This is the best way I found to figure them out. Um, the doing fi actually finding it given your the sharps or flats is pretty easy, but without the sharps or flats in front of you, that's when it gets hard and it takes time. So much to remember, indeed. Oh, sorry guys, I'm starting to run out of steam here. All right, Alk. Uh, you can check them out, them out on Instagram. Won't do that right now, though. Uh, you're welcome, Tim. Glad you liked that hint. Thank you again, Jeremy. Uh, we got Thomas. Welcome. We got... Um, okay. 
in chunk. All right, any, I guess, questions about what we talked about today? Do you have a chart with all key signatures and notes? Yeah, well, I don't have one, but I'll find you one. Um, all right, just give me a second here. I actually found this. Here you go. I put this in a, another lesson I did recently, but um, here you go. Chart with key signatures. So if you're new, I guess I could have mentioned this in the lesson, but I don't want you guys cheating because um, it, it doesn't help you in the long run. But um, check that out. It's a um, chart with key signatures. Uh, Jeremy says, that's why I went team repeats. It's a Tim team. Tim repeats. It's a good thing because there is a lot to learn and have to keep repeating it. Yeah, so I do repeat myself a lot. Um, I try to do it the correct amount of times. I, re I remember when I first started teaching and I'd be nervous teaching and I would repeat myself endlessly like the, the just because I was nervous it was like a nervous tick but now there's actually purpose behind it and uh, you really do need to know this stuff like the uh, back of your hands they as they say hey we got Karen welcome Karen glad you could make it sorry I wasn't able to make it yesterday but glad you could I Ted man I'm getting smacked down with the lethargy here Today's word of the day is lethargy. All right. All right, everybody. I think I might adjourn for today just because it doesn't look like uh, – oh, the only, like, comments or questions I see are like, oh, this is kind of confusing. But um, all I have to tell you is just keep watching it. Uh, Jeremy says there's nothing wrong with that because if you don't use it, you can easily forget it. Well, that is very true. Very good reminder. It's not so easy to be a teacher. I agree. It's not so easy to be a student either, though, is it? Uh, I just saw myself yawn on the uh, screen here, and it just made me yawn even more. <laughs> nope, it's a gift. Yeah. Yeah, not everybody can be a teacher. In fact, I found that like some of the more the more naturally talented students, the, the the musician is that's what they're called is uh usually the worse of a teacher they are it's not 100 percent, but in general like the more natural talent they're not as good and i think really the what happens is, is that they depend on their natural talent so much that and it just kind of appears in their head a lot of this stuff at least this is what my girlfriend in college told me because she has perfect pitch and she was trying to teach me ear training and she's like doesn't it just like appear in your head and like no it doesn't and you're a terrible teacher <laughs> um but i think that's just because in her mind that's just kind of how it happened now me i'm i suck at ear training i'm gonna come out and say that but you guys know that already um but i can explain how to get better at it a lot easier because i've had to come up and and you know um basically use little tricks to to get the answer that doesn't just appear in my head so that's generally what I find. It's not 100%. There are some naturally talented people out there that are certainly great teachers as well. But most of the naturally talented people, they're like, well, some of them never amount to anything, <laughs> I found. Uh, but some of them like play for the orchestra and things like that. But it's so like cutthroat and there's so few positions in each group that you really have a, a you know, John Hell to may be successful in that. Um, although I guess you could say the same thing with YouTube, right? Because nine out of 10 YouTube channels fail and um, <laughs> not a lot of people can do that. So uh, Jeremy, thank you so much for the $10 super chat. Really appreciate it as always. Been killing it with the super chats recently, but I know that um, you, know, you get a lot out of the channel and you want to give back, which is, I, I really appreciate that. Uh, let's see here. Greetings from Poland for all, says Capitan. Welcome from the United States. Sarah says, yes, I think most people have had standout teachers. It really makes a difference. I agree. Do you think you need special talent for composing? No. Many of my friends, many friends of mine say they can't. I think they can learn. I agree with you. I think they can learn as well. Does not take a special talent to compose. Um, now... Is there natural talent in being able to compose and understanding music theory and all that? Yeah, definitely, definitely. Um, but do you need it, natural talent, to be a good um, songwriter? Absolutely not. I mean, it helps, 
but really if you if you want something bad enough in most cases there are some exceptions to this uh, if you want it bad enough and you're willing to work at it hard enough like hours and hours like endlessly you'll get there that's how i got where i am if you guys remember for a long time my videos sucked <laughs> they were not i mean okay I'm, I'm beating myself up a little bit but they're nowhere near as good as they are now and the only reason i got good at making videos because i did it i made over thou uh like i think i've made over 1400 videos which is a lot so that's between the youtube channel and uh, my website I can help any way I can, Tim. No problem. Well, thanks again, Jeremy. Appreciate that. All right. Well, we've had a good discussion today. Um, I think I'm going to end it here, mainly because my energy levels are plummeting for, for some reason. I was up early and all that. Um, and Monday's a pretty busy day. Bust to base says theory is tough to learn. It's something you are better off grasping it as a kid. I agree with that. Again, it kind of helps, though, if you struggle with it a little bit in the beginning oh here are the allergies right on time and uh then you you know learn like learn the hard way because then you have all the little tricks on and then you can teach others how to do it a bit easier if that's what you want to do all right everybody thank you so much for coming by today uh, it's been your piano teacher tim here i'll see you again on saturday for some sort of lesson that we're going to do that i don't remember oh what is it Today was Mastering Key Signatures. Oh, it was the book review. Yeah, 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 we'll do the book review. And then the other lesson I don't remember. But <laughs> I'll see you next time, guys. Have a great day. And it's been your European teacher, Tim, here. Thank you so much for coming by. And I'll see you, of course, yes, you, in that next lesson. All right, guys, have a great day. <laughs> yeah, Karen. I I know that they're not they're not that bad, but they suck to me. <laughs> Let me put it this way: if I st if I kept making the videos that I made in the beginning, then I'd probably have I don't know like ten thousand subs, which you know isn't too bad. But you know because I've learned to adapt and evolve and work at things over and over, that's how I've gotten. Um, a lot better. There's no doubt that my videos are way better. But yeah, I, I agree with you that I'm beating myself up uh, a little bit. All right. Ta-ta, everybody. Have a great day, and I'll see you on the flip side.